and good morning. Welcome to the Decision Point Trading Room. My name is Aaron Swindlin, and I'm here with my father, Carl Swindlin. And we are going to get you ready for the week, look at the charts that uh, we think are important. And then we will also do a sector to watch that we think will be interesting. And then we will look at your symbol requests. So for symbol requests, you need to put your request in the Q&A box. For those of you watching the recording, if you want to join us and give us your symbol requests, the information to register is on our homepage and below the video if you're watching on YouTube. All right, Q&A box for your symbol requests and questions. Chat room is for you to go in and chat amongst yourselves. I do have a moderator who is in there who will tell you hello and welcome you to the room. I think that's all of the housekeeping we have, Dad. I'm going to pass it to you and get ready for my section. Let's start out with our signal table. Begin with, let's see, can you see it? I do see it. Okay. This is as of Friday, um, the intermediate term, term trend model is uh, when the 20, E EMA is above the 50 day EMA. That's a buy signal and uh, also known as a silver cross. And uh, note we got all the stuff that we track closely uh, is on a buy except uh, energy and biotech. <clears throat> the long term trend model is, uh, is when the 50 day EMA is above the 200 day EMA, known as a golden cross when it crosses above them. And uh, we're not so um, great there. We're maybe a little less than half uh, are still on cell signals. So we're not looking too great at the long term. Um, I'm concerned about this being so uh, bright and cheery because I have a theory that the the market goes up, up, up until it's as good, things are as good as they're going to get. And then it starts down, down, down until they're as bad as they're going to get. There are no objective uh, highs or lows there. It's just uh, a, a, a rotation and a seesaw back and forth. Anyway, so we're as good as we're going to get here. It doesn't mean they can't improve beyond what we see on this signal table. Okay, right now, the, the SPY is backed off from what it was on Friday. It had a really big day on Friday, and I thought, that we were probably out of gas uh, using this set of charts here. Um, this is the Swindon Trading Oscillator for breadth and also for volume. And this is the IT trend model. I'm sorry, IT breadth momentum indicator and IT volume momentum indicator. So your short term we see is backing off from overbought and uh, basically being supported by this continued intermediate term strength. So I think we hit a top on Friday and uh, very oversold intermediate term. So I think this week's going to turn in a, a bear showing by the by Friday. Looking at our, I will call them the best breadth indicators around, we've got uh, Silver Cross and Gold Cross indicators which is the percentage of stocks with uh, intermediate term buy signals, which we just went over, and the percentage of stocks with long term buy signals or golden crosses. <clears throat> so, right now, if you compare the level on Friday the, against the, the high in July, so even though price is higher, uh, the Silver Cross Index is 21% lower than it was in July. And then the Golden Cross Index is, uh, I wrote it down here, um, 
20 uh, I'm sorry, 30% lower than it was in July. So we've got way lower participation in the short end and long, I'm sorry, intermediate and long term. Percent of stocks above their 20, 50 EMAs, uh, they're overbought, as you can clearly see over the 10 year range, I'm sorry, three year range. Uh, we're still having caught up in terms of the stocks above the 200 EMA, but I think we're we're in the process of topping out again. Um, we're in December. We got Santa Claus working for us, so I'm not so sure it's going to be a, a terrible sell off. But it's uh, it's I would be I think we're going to end the the week down. So I'm, I think you've got it set up to look at the Magnificent Seven today. Um, I I was noticing, and it was something I was going to ask you about when you were done, but I'll just put it in, in your head. Yeah, so we, we were talking about RSP, and we've talked about the Magnificent Seven. So one of the things I'd like to talk to you about when you're done is your thoughts on the Magnificent Seven and, and some of the deterioration we're seeing there. But we can take that after you're done with your other part. Right, and that's that is in my uh, line up here. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, um, here we have the dollar through the U, um, ETF UUP uh, rallying slightly, um, still under the trend line. If you drew one there, uh, gold um, really down today. It's down to. 2.33% at this um, juncture um, on, on uh, Friday, gold hit a new all-time high. If you're looking at dollar GOLD, that's the symbol, that, but that's not real data. It's a continuous contract data. And, uh, so on Friday, we did hit, exceed the old all-time high by just a hair. Let me go back to the um, gold. And I, I'm thinking I need to start using GLD in the weekly, at least, <clears throat> so I keep better track. You know, gold, okay, so theoretically, this was a, a new all-time high on Friday. But if you look at the weekly chart, it is not. Uh, not close to, you know, this is, uh, this is more accurate data because uh, it's what you would be trading with. So it hasn't made an all time high, but we've had one, two, three, and this is the fourth time. I think that like, we've exceeded this one. I think we're going to, I think we're going to go for it this time, but right now we're in a pullback. USO um, not, doing well at all and you know go figure <clears throat> let's look at the weekly on that okay we've got a <clears throat> uh top um, top below a top so would seem that we're going to be headed to uh, a bottom below this bottom so it doesn't look like it's a buy right at this point treasury uh, this is a 20 plus year uh, T TLT ETF and uh, it's rallying. Um, <clears throat> if we look at the long term chart of the 30 year bond, this is the monthly, and you can see we've got a descending wedge. And this is, I guess, my all time favorite uh, formation is wedges of rising or falling. And this is probably going to break out this time, probably going to see um, uh, yields uh, falling and bonds rising. But I don't think we're going to get a, a recapture the, the channel here at all. I think that we'll have a rally and it may last a year or so. And that that's, that's me looking in the crystal ball. <laughs> okay, on good. We're, um, <clears throat> we've got a falling wedge on the ten-year Treasury yield, 
and uh, pretty much, uh, I can't guarantee it, but it's most likely it's going to break out and and rise for a while. I can't say it's going to recapture that. But look at the <clears throat> yield array. This is a two-year chart, and you can see we're kind of in a trading range here, It's and it's coming off of the high end of that range. Maybe we'll find uh, support here again, but it looks like it'll be a while before we're going to catch uh, yields go rising. Bitcoin is going crazy. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So uh, definitely in a rising trend and actually breaking out. And that has to do with... Uh, new ETFs that people are trying to, to start. Speculation. Okay, here's our Magnificent Seven. There was an analyst on, I think it was uh, Wall, Street Journal, Wall Street Journal report on Fox on the weekend, and she was saying there's now a Magnificent, magnificent Ten. I don't know what the other three are. <laughs> Said. But anyway, the seven there, uh, well, let's see, uh, Apple here is coming off of, uh, of a high and uh, it still did not exceed the all-time high over here. Amazon coming off of an all-time high. No, that's not an all-time high. We know because there. Mm -hmm. Google. <clears throat> Um, coming off of a high, a, a top below a top, so we could be starting a downtrend. We've got topping PMO and downside crossover. <clears throat> Made of platforms coming off of an all time high. Mm. Microsoft, really big down day <clears throat> today. Um, <clears throat> and again, a, a topping PMO. Uh, downside crossover. These the magnificent seven aren't looking so magnificent today. Mm -mm. Nvidia coming off of an all time high again and declining. And eventually, and here is Tesla. Tesla is um, in a declining trend channel and uh, probably going lower along with the other. So then here, that's not a, it's, here's the all-time high back in 2021. So um, it's basically in a downtrend at this point. I did have a, 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 an ETF I, I would not recommend that you follow, not buy, because uh, it's something that we need to see how it's going to turn out, but TBG stands for the the, the Bonson Group, and uh, that's uh, bon David Bonson is a really sharp guy. He shows he's on he's on uh, Fox Business on a regular basis, and his focus his investment group focuses on uh, dividend paying stocks. And this this uh, ETF is uh, the components are between twenty five and thirty five ish uh, dividend paying stocks, mm -hmm. and it's, this would be different from other dividend focused uh, ETFs <clears throat> in that the the uh, selection is done uh, individually, not by by just a group like, you know, not like all the dividend paying stocks in the SP 500. This is uh, narrows it down. So I don't know how it's going to turn out. We've got to wait and see what kind of dividend is going to pay. And that may take a, another couple of months. So something to watch, maybe a good dividend play. Right. The volume's pretty low. So I think that does give us more um, waiting period to see how that works out. Right. It's uh, and if it's dividend focused, it's not necessarily going to be always going up. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, and then let's see, I had another. Yeah, I, I wrote an article, and I'm, I'm just going to skim it right now, uh, last week. But uh, when you're doing timing models, mechanical timing models, you want to make sure you're using the right data set. Uh, this is for dollar INDU, which is Dow Jones Industrial Average, the official Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is uh, DIA, the uh, ETF for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It is adjusted for dividends. And that's what, just the same way that all the stocks and mutual funds that we trade, um, they're all adjusted. The data is all adjusted for dividends and splits for that matter. But in this case, splits wouldn't be in there. Um, as you can see, performance on the two is quite a bit different. So you want to have, this would be considered the real performance, the, the DIA would be the real performance of the Dow. This is the official Dow. And I don't know why they don't, uh, they don't uh, adjust it for dividends, but probably for historical references, uh, your historical reference would change because it, as you adjust for dividends, uh, previous data is corrected downward by the, the percentage of the dividend. So, if I, the reason I bring this up, it, was, it really slammed me hard to, to realize what what was going on here. Uh, years ago, I spent several years trying to work up um, mechanical trading models uh, using the the dollar INDU, dollar SPX, all of which were not adjusted for dividends, and and it was a total waste of time. And uh, just <laughs> it's one of those things, if you're a lot younger, something you won't have to stumble in that I did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess I covered it all. Yes, but I did still have that question on RSP because we talked about it in one of your um, free articles. But if you could just pull up like the one year chart, I think that would be good. You because wanna... one of the things that I've noticed um, we haven't had a chance to talk about it, but is the the relative strength of RSP to um, to the to the market to the spy, and that you know usually we don't see a huge amount of uh, change in that particular chart, but okay. yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I think I do, and let's see if I can get it on here. Okay, here's. Uh what we have on our one-year chart. Uh, this is in our list that is available to subscribers. But uh, <clears throat> here's the relative strength between SPY and RSP. When this is rising, it means SPY is the strongest. As you can see, SPY is uh, starting to drift down um, in terms of relative strength of, of the equal weight index. Uh, what what uh, was the point you wanted to make? Well, just the fact that, you know, we're seeing the Magnificent Seven starting to fail. And that's really, I think, represented in that relative strength line. The fact that, you know, RSP is starting to really outperform. And that, to me, that tells me leadership has begun to fade. And the leadership in the market are, are the Magnificent Seven, are those mega caps. And if they start to fail... The market's probably going to fail. Right. That's yeah. my thought. And as far as the RSP being an equal weight, it's rebalanced every quarter. So these huge um, market cap stocks will still, if they're going up, they're going to be still growing in terms of weighting that equal weight average. And, and they'll be knocked back down to equal weight every quarter, but they can still give it more focused strength in the major, you know, large cap stocks. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I just was noticing that when I was writing up uh, some of our reports and 
normally you don't see that it's it's usually kind of twitchy doesn't really do much but i thought that was really interesting looking right okay i think i yes. let's, let's look do we have any questions that there need to be there is a question that asks for your opinion in specifically um crude and natural gas continue their volatile nature but fundamentals on both holds um, hold some promise or do they hold any promise in your opinion? So do you think natural gas has, you know, it's been volatile, crude has been volatile, but do they hold any promise? Okay, here's UNG and it's making new lows, you know, much mm. to my distress. But anyway, <laughs> it's, that's that's what yeah, I, I look at it as a, an option, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But that I don't that doesn't expire. Uh, um, ultimately, I think this has to turn, but uh, maybe it's going to take. Well, it's obviously going to take more time than I ever thought. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not enthralled, enthralled with the uh, performance of the uh, fossil fuel, if we if we will, uh, segment. Uh, you, uh, USO, you know, it's, let's look at a weekly chart. It's just, it's not doing anything great. We, you know, from during COVID, it was rallying great, but it's just turned into nothing. And it's been like for two years now. Yeah. So I don't have any, uh, any insights it's just it hasn't turned and nothing technical uh looks good at this time on those charts yeah i mean i've been looking for a turn in crude oil we were finally starting to see that pmo um you know getting moving up looking like it wanted to do a positive crossover um and now it, it's failing and now it's topping beneath the signal line so i have to take to pivot my bullish position on oil because it's starting to look a lot more negative than I had expected. Yeah, so and there's another that. question on USG. Um, is dreadful? Can it go to two dollars? If so, bailing out here is wise, but it has to get cold eventually. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I uh, the uh, yeah, I, I, I have considered taking a loss uh, for this year on. On you, uh, well, that's USG, the UNG. I think it's still the same yeah. story. Yeah, US gas. Yeah, and so I, I'm still thinking about that. Me too. <laughs> Have it's, you heard um, of an old school strategy of switching investments between S and P market weight and equal weight, depending on the signals of a point and figure chart? Okay. Um, that is something that I've always had in the back of my mind that it could be done. Uh, I've never done it, and uh, and I don't use portent figures. I mean, it, it's just they're not intuitive to me. Uh, I like looking at a, a bar chart. I don't like um, I don't like log charts. I like linear charts, and because uh, they're intuitive. But that's my own opinion. All right. I think that's it for the questions. It's time for me to get into the sectors. I won't take too much time with that. Um, so I think what's there are a couple of interesting things on the candle glance. This is all of the sectors all on one page with the PMO and the stock charts technical rank. And where you can see the strength was we were getting that in comm services and in discretionary and in technology. All of the aggressive sectors had been performing very well. I mean, look at technology, straight up rally, but now it's starting to fail and comm services had already begun to fail. These are the aggressive areas of the market. When the aggressive areas start to fail, you should expect a decline. And I think that's what we're in the process of getting how deep it will go, I think is, you know, anyone's guess, but the internals, I think in the intermediate term still look pretty good. So I think it won't be a giant correction at this point. 
but if the charts turn, I'll certainly turn my opinion too. Um, XLY though is still showing some strength and you can see that that PMO is surging above the signal line right now. So I think comm services looks really interesting and something we might want to um, explore further. Energy is the other. And with crude oil looking a lot less bullish, I'm a little less bullish here in energy, but I think it's worthwhile to look inside the energy sector at some of those industry groups. So I'm gonna do that for you just to see that, yes, there is some strength in energy, but it's not necessarily where you might think it, it would be. And I think it's interesting to look at. One of the industry groups has just been going crazy and I, that was it was really unexpected, but we'll get to that. All right. The failures going on, I would say, you know, everybody's pretty much other than technology and comm services, the PMOs are rising, which is good. You can see though, when you compare the stock charts, technical ranks, you can see really where the, um, where the negativity or the underperformance has been. And one of the big underperformers has been consumer staples. And it is in a nice rising trend. Everything's going right for it. But if you're in consumer staples, you haven't been able to enjoy the kind of rally that someone in technology has been able to enjoy. But it is a good place that, you know, to diversify. I think having some staples in there, just based on their very steady move to the upside, I think wouldn't be a bad idea. But of course, if the market makes the turn, everybody could end up moving down. But generally, when you start to see the the um, movement out of those aggressive sectors, you're going to start seeing it rotate into some of these more defensive sectors like staples and healthcare, which is starting to get a nice rally, and real estate, which has really taken off. I mean, it's got a nice stock charts technical rank of 84 and a half. So um, looking very strong. Financials also very, very strong, has the highest scooter value of all of the sectors. So I would have to say that everything still looks pretty good, but the fact that we're losing strength in those aggressive areas and gaining some strength in these more defensive areas tells me that the market is in trouble right now. All right, so let's go quickly to the industry group summary. We're going to look inside discretionary and we will look inside energy. We'll only pick away, we'll just pick a pick a few of them in consumer discretionary. There's a lot of them in here. Um, but as you can see, we're going to look at the PMO and stochastics here primarily. And this is the relative strength to the S&P. So right now, breakout on auto parts, looking healthy for autos. I like business training and employment. You can see the rising PMOs, stochastics looking good. And are, are gambling looking a little less interesting. The PMO is topped. Clothing and accessories taking off more than likely off of retail numbers coming out of Black Friday. Uh, specialized consumer services starting to, to pair over. Furnishings looking good. Footwear looking very good. Home construction, which was in a very deep decline, has really rebounded in a big way. Lots to look at here. And I would have to say when we go through these industry groups, you can see that a lot of health. Broadline retailers not looking that good. That would be your Amazons of the world. And interestingly, with Black Friday, et cetera, we're not seeing the kind of action out of the broadline retailers that I would expect. Recreational services, looking good. Toys taken off, maybe that's a before Christmas kind of thing. And tires breaking out right now, looking really interesting. But here's what I wanted to show you is energy, and there are only five industry groups here. So oil equipment and services are gonna be really tied closely to crude oil, and you can see this, the chart looks very similar to crude oil, really struggling, hasn't broken down just yet, but definitely not looking very uh, healthy. Integrated oil and gas also tied fairly closely to crude oil and also struggling here to get a turnaround. 
exploration and production looking a little bit healthier, but again, still kind of bounded by what's going on in crude oil, not getting that bounce out of this congestion area. Pipelines, though, pipelines have really been doing quite well, and they tend to be somewhat tied to crude oil, but clearly not as tied right now. It's definitely this industry group of pipelines has decoupled from the crude oil play. And coal looking also very good. You can see the PMO has surged above the signal line here, and we do have a breakout going on in coal. So there are these two areas are bright spots. And I think this is what's really keeping that. Um, Let me interject the, here. As you're talking about coal, <clears throat> there's a yes. headline <clears throat> on TV that Biden administration is committed to shutting down coal powered uh, power plants. Just, just as we're talking about yeah, coal breaking right. out. Um, yeah, I wonder if um, supply would be an issue here with coal plants. Maybe that would help as well. I don't know, but that doesn't sound too good. Energy. So here's the thing. So you've got pipelines and coal, which are doing quite well, but energy itself is not. And that's because all those under other industry groups that are tied to crude oil are really struggling right now. And I've been looking for a reversal in energy. The PMO has given us a crossover buy signal, but we're just not getting any participation. You can see that it has just been staying very even across the board, and we're just not getting a broadening of that participation. So while I think this is a great area for energy to make a rebound, we're just not seeing the kind of evidence that we need to to expect it to break out at this point. So while it could break out, I would like to see that 50 day EMA broken from, we're not getting enough broad participation to expect it just yet. All right, that covers my portion and that leaves us 25 minutes for some symbol requests. So let's get to it. D-U-O-L. D-U-O-L, that's a new one on me, Duolingo. That's right, I've seen this before. My husband loves this app. <laughs> it's uh, They do an app that helps you learn different uh, languages, um, sort of a soft version of Rosetta Stone. Um, PMO is turning down, not, not looking too healthy here. And price has kind of rounded off a bit here. Um, Relative strength is staying pretty even, but I don't like the look of that PMO. Um, if I own this stock, I would be tightening up my stop because I would be expecting it to break down here. So you may be getting a pretty good rally today, but I would be very careful. I think tightening up a stop here would make sense. I don't think I would be a buyer simply because that PMO is overbought weekly. Well, let me get the weekly too. There we go. Yeah, and the weekly chart um, looks fairly healthy here. It is flirting with new all-time highs. Like I said, I think it's a little bit over uh, overbought here. The PMO is overbought right now, although it's new. It's a new weekly PMO, so they still have to kind of find their find its legs and where it wants to be as far as its trading range. Um, but at this point, I would say it's overbought. So you know, I, I just wouldn't be a buyer here. Five minute candle. If you did want to buy, the buying opportunity came back here where we had a five minute PMO crossover with the positive RSI. And you can see right there that that would have been your last buy point. Doesn't look like you're going to get there today. Um, PMO starting to turn over just a little bit, but at this point, I don't know that you're going to see much lower prices than where you're at now if you were a buyer. Okay, Roku. All right. And I did kind of look down into the Q&A box, and I saw that the person, Charlotte, um, I saw that she wanted to compare Roku with, I believe, Netflix. It's near the bottom yeah, if you want to check that's that. correct. Okay. So when I do a this or that, I like to compare relative strength. That's usually where I get my, um, there are 
two different places though. These are two different, they're not in the same group, but it still is important to see how are they performing against the S&P. Right now, I would say Roku is doing quite well. It's very overbought. The RSI is overbought. The PMO is overbought. Stochastics are above 80. Again, I don't look at stochastics as an overbought, oversold indicator because it's really a temperature gauge and it's running hot, which is good. We want it above 80. But it does tell you um, that it is on the overbought side for sure. Um, but still looking pretty healthy. That PMO is just, that bothers me. It's just so overbought. Um, but Roku still has a positive uh, bias, I'd say a bullish bias, just given the way that the EMAs are configured. Um, let's look at the weekly chart. We'll go to the comparison shortly. I like the weekly chart getting a breakout from strong overhead resistance right now. PMO buy signal, very strong scooter raking. So I do like Roku and not at a buy point. We actually got to a sell point where that five minute PMO turned over. That's your sell point. So I would expect you're going to get lower prices on the day, which would give you a much better entry on this one. All right, we're comparing it to Netflix. So you saw the relative strength line for Roku. This is a much different um, relative strength line. Notice that relative strength is starting to fail on Netflix. We have this rounded top going on here. The decline is accelerating lower. The PMO is on a sell signal. I think there's really no question as to which has the stronger chart here. And that would definitely be Roku. Netflix really looks like it's in for a bit more of a decline. It's one of those, I believe it's one of the Magnificent Seven, or is it not? Maybe that's part of the new Magnificent Ten. <laughs> um, yeah, I, offhand, I can't remember. I know. <laughs> Age. I think it crazy? is. It certainly, yeah. It was one we used to track. I think it's still in there. Yeah. So failing, I don't like it. Um, so that's your comparison. Uh, weekly chart of Netflix. I mean, I think it's going to be, some problems developing. Yes, we're starting to see the weekly PMO trying to turn over. Look what's happened to the stock charts technical rank, really starting to, to turn over as well. Um, suggest that there is a rocky road ahead for Netflix. PFE. Pfizer. It's not very exciting to me. I mean, it's in this long-term declining trend. Um, Stochastics have topped and they never really got above 80. This is a very weak stock right now. Granted, it's having a pretty nice um, rebound and there is more interest in the healthcare area, but this one is weak at best. It's performing in line with the S&P. I know there are stocks in pharmaceuticals. I couldn't tell you which ones offhand, but I know there are some that are gonna be outperforming the S&P and Pfizer is not really doing that right now. Let's look at a weekly. Pretty ugly, huh, Dad? Yeah, yeah. Nothing, no, nothing good looking there. No, no redeeming qualities. Scooter three point three. I don't, I don't like Pfizer here. I'm going to pass on the five minute chart. Yeah. Okay. TGTX. TG Therapeutics. Now here's a pharma that looks way healthy. How nice that we went right to another pharmaceutical. Um, a lot better look. It's not still in its declining trend. It's formed a nice, strong rising trend. It is outperforming the S&P. It is broken out above its 200 day EMA. The big problem with it is it's overbought right now and it is due for a pullback, but you can also leave overbought conditions for the RSI by simply moving sideways. So maybe we'll see more in the way of consolidation or a digestion phase. But in any case, it is due for a digestion period, whether that's a decline or moving sideways. Um, but I, I do like this one much better. I, I think that um, it, it certainly has some upside potential. Really nice weekly chart. I guess my only thing would be that the scooter is falling. 
Um, the stock charts technical rank gives you a really good read on how this stock is set up in the intermediate to long terms as far as trend and condition. It was developed by John Murphy. It's a bunch of, you can go and look on stock charts, but this is telling me that we need to keep the investment short term for now because we don't have the kind of support in the intermediate and long term I'd want to see. So that would be my only caveat but I think it's worth a look at the five minute chart. Really the PM, five minute PMO is not very helpful here at all. And reason being it's on a very, very steady uptrend. So really your buy points are gonna be during these pause periods. Um, we're getting a pause here, but the PMO, if you look is headed down still, I think you're still going to be stuck with a purchase point right in this little um, consolidation zone because if this steady rising trend continues, I would expect another move up, not a move down. Okay, VLO. Valero. Uh, again, one tied to crude oil. We talked a lot about crude, so I don't want to get too far into it. Um, but not looking healthy. So I wouldn't necessarily be a buyer of these energy stocks if I could avoid it. Now, if you got into an energy stock, I don't think that it's time to bail necessarily. Um, you can see with Valero, in, in fact, it's moving mostly sideways. Um, they're in a consolidation phase. Now, based on what I'm seeing in crude oil, there is a bearish bias here that you're going to have to fight. The SPY, it's moving in line with the S&P, not really outperforming the S&P. So that tells me there are places I'd rather be than Valero. But if you owned it, I think you're still okay. You just need to tighten that stop up in case crude oil really starts to pick up to the downside because that's going to really hit this stock hard. If we can finally get that reversal in crude oil, this will be a good stock. But I don't know that I'd want to be a buyer here as you know, I'd be really having to just wait it out. I think you're better off putting it on a watch list than entering it right now. Weekly, I don't like the weekly chart. PMO doesn't look that good. It is decelerating, um, double top developing here on the chart. Um, Stock charts technical rank is still moving up, but it's not in what I call the hot zone above 70. That's really where I want to see my stock scooter ranking. So it's not there. Uh, I'm not really a fan here, so I'm going to skip the five minute chart. Okay, A ACMR. Another stock here in decline, PMO on a sell signal. I'm assuming you're looking at this. Let's see. I don't know. You just put the symbol in, so I don't know if you're looking at this for a buy or not. This is not a buy, in my opinion. You've lost support at the key moving averages. You have a PMO sell signal. You have stochastic still headed lower, could end up below 20, which would be a signal that there's a lot of internal weakness. I don't like the way that it's underperforming the S&P. Um, I don't think I'd want to own this. I don't know that I'd be waiting around on this. Certainly there is some support at this level, but that means you're in for at least another eight, six to 8% decline. I would not want to be in this one. So certainly not a buyer. Um, I would be more of a seller. Uh, I don't know that I'd be shorting the market right now in, in a big bull market kind of move, but um, certainly a, a stock you could almost look at as a short. You can see the weekly PMO has topped and is heading lower. Um, still have a strong technical stock charts technical rank. So that's that would probably prevent me from shorting this stock. AA. I think that's our color, isn't it? I believe so. Look at you starting to get the symbols now. <laughs> that's from uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's an old one, right? From the, the it's old... in the Dow. Yeah. Yeah, it was in the Dow. Okay. Um, sorry, I gotta wet my whistle there a little bit. Um, I like the look here of aluminum. I didn't talk about materials in my sector overview, but I think materials are looking uh, pretty good still. Gold having a problem isn't make them look too good today. 
Um, but aluminum looking pretty good here for Alcoa. Um, nice turn, but we are in a little bit of a trading range. It gives me a, a kind of a, a feel like UNG, you know, could, while it's making this turn, we could end up in this trading range moving sideways for a while. Um, the PMO has been in rising. Where's our overhead resistance is about 15% away. So there's some pretty good upside potential here. Uh, I like Alco right here. Does have a negative uh, earning PE. So keep that in mind. Weekly chart. Yeah, the weekly chart suggests that this is a stock that is getting more healthy. It is still below that 17 week EMA. I'd like to see it get above there. Um, but weekly PMO looks pretty good. So this does look like it's ripe for a reversal. We go to a five minute candlestick chart. The buy point arrived back here. It didn't arrive here because the RSI was still negative. So we like to see the RSI positive as well. So this was your last buy point. That was at about 2753. We're currently at 2747 and the PMO is still rising. So you are currently at your buy point. Okay, SAIA. Nice reversal rally going on. PMO surging above the signal line, a surge meaning it's bottomed above the signal line. Uh, really nice outperformance coming on this very strong rally. I'm not sure what has uh, got this rally going here, but um, certainly looks like we're going to get some follow through based on these indicators looking pretty good. But I have to say a pretty forceful rally of three days that is, let's see how much how far have we moved in three days here? That's about an 11% gain in three days. It's due for a little bit of a digestion phase here and it's hit overhead resistance or it's gonna hit this area of overhead resistance. So you've got a resistance zone and I would guess that's gonna be the place you're gonna see some digestion. So not necessarily would be a buyer here just because I think it is getting ready to digest but it's not that I would sell either. I think it would be a perfectly good hold. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I I think you could be a buyer here, but it's not my favorite chart. Um, yeah, the weekly chart isn't very strong. Um, stock charts technical rank is though, but I don't like the way the weekly PMO is lined up here. It is getting ready to hit those all time highs. So I think it's gonna have a little bit of a struggle here, but right now it's looks like it'll head to that area with without much problem. I think A E M. Gold miner. Um, I like gold. We still like gold. Um, you know, it hit all all time highs, it's psychological level. It might be that point where everybody's sort of ah pulling back a little bit, maybe need to work out. Um, some of that psychology, if you will, to get us above that that all-time high again. But I like gold still. And gold miners are likely to um, enjoy a rally, continued rally, I should say. Gold miners have looked really good. I think we, I don't think we looked at that chart. So I'm going to- No, we did GDX. Let's look at GDX. All right. So- GDX, we have the under the hood indicators for, which is why I wanted to come to it. Gold miners have very, very strong participation right now. They really look like they could move higher. Um, if the only issue might be is that they are getting overbought, but we can see the silver cross has gotten to higher readings. We can see that overbought conditions can persist. Right here, you can see we had very overbought conditions on this big rally. And I think we're on another big rally. Stochastics did top, but they're still above 80. Um, I think we might get a little bit of a pullback. We could end up back here to this support level again, but ultimately I am expecting gold miners to move higher. So AEM, has a, you know, it's got a bullish backdrop. 
because the industry group it's in is doing well. The sector it's in is doing well. So half of your stock's movement is attributed to what's happening in the sector in the industry group, and that's going well. So I like this one. I think you're going to see higher prices. It looks like it hit its own little level of overhead resistance, and it's struggling a little bit. Um, but I would expect it to re to reverse. This is good too. This big decline is getting that RSI out of overbought territory. So still outperforming the S and P. I like the gold miners right now. Let's look at its weekly chart. And the weekly chart looks very favorable as well. The weekly PMO is on the rise after a crossover buy. I don't like the way the scooter is acting here. It got to that hot zone level and has pulled back a little bit. But ultimately, I think that you've got a pretty good look here, certainly in the short term. Five-minute candlestick chart. Uh, let's see, last buy point was about here, which was at 53.49. We are at 53.37, so you are at a better buy point currently. But the PMO is looking a little flat and sluggish here as price is pulling back. So if you wanted, you might be able to wait and get a better buy point. But ultimately, I think you are at a pretty decent buy point right now. Okay, MGA. Um, I'm seeing a reverse head, left shoulder, right shoulder. And the neckline technically is rising. I think you could kind of take it through this level, though. I, I think you could take it through there. And we're finally getting what looks like a breakout to confirm that particular pattern. Um, RSI is positive. I like the way the PMO is surging above that signal line. We can see that uh, Stochastic's rising. It's starting to outperform the S&P. I like this one. And auto parts, I do recall when we looked at the industry groups, did look positive. So I think you found a good stock here. Let's look at the weekly. Weekly chart also looks good. We've got a positive weekly RSI. We have a positive weekly PMO that has just uh, given us what looks like it's in the process of setting up a crossover buy signal for this week. We'll see. Or might have come in on Friday. I can't really tell that. Um, uh, scooter rising, not in the hot zone yet, but I think you're going to get a move to top to the top of this particular trading range. Everything seems to imply that, and that's about a 14% gain. So I think it's a pretty good looking stock here for Magna MGA. Five minute candlestick chart looks pretty good as well. The um, buy point has already come in. I'd say you might want to wait just because that RSI is overbought and needs to come down and um, relieve those overbought conditions. But at the same time, it's been very, very strong. The PMO has been in decline, but price has held up just fine. So tough one here as far as the buy point. I think you could make a case to just pull the trigger now if you wanted to buy, but it would be nice to wait for that RSI to not be overbought. Okay, uh, we have a question. Do you follow short interest? Uh, any good source of screen short interest as the short information varies from one source to another? Okay, I used to follow short interest and I used to get it out of Barron's and uh, I just gave up on it. First of all, it was too expensive I don't get Barron's anymore, and uh, I don't know of any. There, there probably are sources of it online, but I don't know of any. Yeah, I'm not particularly familiar. This, I just thought I'd pull this up. It does give you some interesting information regarding the shares per for a particular company. If you pull, pull this up here and get the symbol summary, it'll bring you this page. And you can see there are some fundamentals that are in here. You can see the shares outstanding in the float, um, the percent held by institutions, kind of some interesting information on underneath the surface that might help a little bit. Okay, CENX, and we've got about uh, three and a half minutes. All right, let's see how far we can go here. 
nice breakout um, pullback today, which makes sense on the breakout. Uh, indicators still very positive. SPY um, performance against the SPY is good. Let's get the weekly chart so far so good. Um, another look, good look. I don't like what's going on with the scooter here. So we have to keep that in mind, but ultimately with the five minute or the, the weekly RSI and the weekly PMO looking as good as they do. And that breakout above the 43 week EMA, I think you're going to see some more upside on this one. So I think that it's in the, in the bullish category, the five minute candlestick chart, um, I'd say you're probably at your buy point. The PMO is really flat. Um, it does look a little toppy here, but right now the last 10 minutes, um, some positive action here might be getting ready to bottom and move back up. So maybe keep an eye on that RSI when it gets positive, that might be a, a good entry. You won't have to worry about another pullback. Hey, um, GDX unadjusted chart is not close to double double or triple top. I don't understand the question. It's yeah. un, we don't use unadjusted charts, so I, I don't know what to say to that. Yeah. That looks like a, a reverse head and shoulders. Right. And I see that even on the adjusted chart. Um, I I mean, I just think gold miners look pretty good. Right. Okay, let's try P A A S. I think that'll be the last. Yep. All right, last one. Nice move, breakout above the 200 day EMA, although that has been the failure point one, two, three, four times. So that would make me a little bit nervous this time around, but it is preceded by a pretty nice looking double bottom here. And let's see, there's your confirmation line and it is currently trading above that it closed above it so i think you have a better chance this time around um silver cross of the 20 and 50 day emas gives you a nice bullish bias on this chart um i like everything going on here let's look at the weekly it's kind of a trading range stock which isn't great um and it is kind of near the top of the range but we do have a weekly PMO on a buy signal, weekly RSI positive, could have a better scooter, but it has been in this trading range. I still favor this one for a breakout. Um, overhead resistance, that's about 17, 18% away. So I think there's some pretty decent upside potential on this one. Five minute candle to close us out. You are at the buy point. The crossovers occurred, you have a positive RSI, the PMO has now even gotten above the zero line. So I think this is probably a decent buy point. And that... Highshortinterest.com is a good source for short interest. Just some, one of our yeah. viewers has... Excellent. And finviz.com provides share short a uh, short float and short interest for free, apparently. So there you go. Short interest information. All right. That does it for us. We hope you enjoyed the trading room for this week. We will be back. Um, let's see. Are we back next week? Next week, we will not be back. I'm going to be traveling. So we will not have a trading room on next Monday, but look for us the following Monday and we will be back with you. That's all we have. Good luck and good trading. Mm -hmm.